Today I am going to explain you the Dear Departed drama. So it is a humorous drama, The Dear Departed. From the name itself, it is very clear if we can analyze the name of the drama, the dear, which means a very loving person in a family, departed, means passed away. So from the name itself, we can understand the meaning, means the essence of the story. A lovable person of a family gets departed from the family. Before entering into the drama lines, we will just see here an extract from an old man's diary. Here, read an extract from the diary of a man of 72 years. Now, I am going to read an extract from the diary of a man of 72 years. He is writing like this in his diary. As I sit here alone and waiting... Up the person, the old person sitting in a place and waiting for something. I gaze at people passing me by. So this man is sitting near a window and observing the people who are passing by the road. I try to smile and reach out to them. So whenever he find a person passing in that way, he try to smile at them so that they will wish him, they will talk to him. But no one notices, no one waits. But it is really an unfortunate thing that no passerby is noticing this old man's smile, neither observing that he is sitting a window and observing the people passing by. They look to me like I am nothing. Are they afraid to be seen saying hi to an old man? like me so finally after observing so many people so many passers by as no one is observing this man and his smile he came to a conclusion what is the conclusion given by the man here are they afraid to be seen saying hi to an old man like me so he came to a conclusion thinking that maybe the people who are passing in that way are afraid of him afraid of talking to him once my life so with this disappointment he is very sad and he is trying to recollect his olden days see what he will see what he is recollecting here once my life it's like a flower so he is telling in olden days his life used to be like a flower i had bloomed into a chair now like the dying flower so he used to be when he was a child he's a like he is like a flower but now as he has become old even though he is trying to talk to the people no one is turning towards him so he is considering himself as a dying flower waiting for my one day to come so finally he is telling he doesn't have any hope on his life he says that he is waiting for one day what is the day the day on which he is going to die he wanted to die and he was waiting for that day it will be then that I am gone. So what happens when a person dies? He is gone for ever. That is the same thing what this man is writing in his diary. He is telling it will be then that I am gone. He says that he will be gone when he is dead. And yet I still would not have heard that simple word hi. So what is the intention of this person sitting near the window? This old man he is expecting a simple word hi from the passers by he is expecting one or the other person who is passing in that way seeing him seeing his smile they'll come and wish him hi only for that small word he is waiting but no person is responding that for so long my heart had desired so for a long time his heart has only one desire that is the people should come and wish him and even the people are not observing they are not caring for him so he's so sad this is the condition of you of the old people in the present society 
See here, after reading the extract, you need to think on the questions like, what do you think he is feeling? So, what do you think will be the feeling of this old man? It is very clear that his feelings are so sad. Why is he sad? As his desire is not fulfilled, the old man is so sad. What situation do you think leads to people feeling so what do you think is the situation? Why the old man is feeling so sad in this situation? What do you think? His loneliness as he is so alone, as he is all alone and he did not find any person to talk to him. So, he is very sad. Can such people be helped? How? So, in your idea, do you think that these people can be helped? And if you think, how do you think that you can help these people? people. Now, here I am going to uh, read a newspaper extract, a story from a newspaper. India's elderly face growing neglect. So, the heading of this news is India's elderly face growing neglected. Means in India, the elderly people are being neglected. This is written by Tinku Ray and it is given in BBC News, Delhi. So, we'll see. There has been a study raised recently in reports of cases of elderly being abused, harassed and abandoned in India. See here you have to see the meaning, you have to observe the meaning of three words. One is abused. So, in this story written in a newspaper, it is given there has been a study raise recently in reports of cases. Means there is an increase in the reports in the cases where elderly means the old people are being abused. Abused means scolding and harassed. Harassed means tortured. So the elderly people are being scolded, being tortured and abandoned so abandoned abandoned means left away who were left all alone so here in india in recent times if we can observe the number of cases regarding the abusing or harassing or abandoning the old people are being increased in nowadays Traditionally, older people have been revered, revered in India, signified by the touching of their feet by the younger generation. So, this is the condition what we have discussed previously, abusing, arrest and abandoning the olden people. It is happening in the present society. But in olden days, these people, the old people were rewarded. In what ways they are rewarded? The younger generations used to touch the field of elder people and ask them to bless them. That is the respect we used to give to older people in olden days. Prime ministers and presidents have almost always been senior citizens. In olden days, the prime ministers or the presidents, they used to be only the older citizens. Joint family systems. In olden days, we have joint families, but now nuclear families are rapidly increasing. Where three or more generations lived under one roof, where a strong support network for the elderly. In olden days, we used to have joint families where more than two or three generations used to live under one roof, where the younger generation used to give utmost respect to the elder people of the family. They used to get good support. Elder people used to get good support from the younger generations. But more children are now leaving their parent homeless to set up their own. So now what happening? Many people, many children are leaving their house to settle in their life. The people are moving to other towns and cities for jobs. They are leaving their parents. They are leaving their houses. That is the reason why the nuclear families are being increased in the present society, leaving the elder ones all alone. Before entering into the drama line of the drama, The Dear Departed, we'll just see about the author. So, the author of the drama, The Dear Departed, was William Stanley Houghton, 1881 and 1913. He was a famous English dramatist. 
He was one of the best of a group of realistic playwriters often called the Manchester School. In every play, he sought to present an idea. He had a remarkable gift for dialogue that is evident in The Dear Departed. See here we can easily understand the writing style of the author. He is really a remarkable, he had a remarkable gift for dialogue writing that we can clearly see in the drama The Dear Departed. The Dear Departed was first produced in Manchester in 1908. Here, Hockton sterilizes the degradation of moral values in the British middle class. See here, we can easily understand from this story what the author tried to convey. The author, author tried to convey the degradation of moral values in the British middle class society. Now we are going to enter into the story. Before entering into the story, we will just see the characters of the story. We have different humorous characters and serious characters here in the story. The characters of the drama are... First, we will see two sisters. The two important characters of the drama, the two sisters. One is Mrs. Slatter. And another one is Mrs. Jordan. So, the two main characters in the story are the two sisters. One is Mrs. Slatter and the other one is Mrs. Jordan. Next, their husbands. Next two characters we are going to see here are the husbands of the two sisters whom we mentioned above. One is Henry Slatter. Henry Slatter is the husband of Mrs. Slatter and the another one is Ben Jordan. And the next character is Ben Jordan. Ben Jordan is the husband of Mrs. Jordan. And the remaining two characters are Victoria Slatter. And Abel Mary. Weather. So the characters here we discussed about two sisters. One is Mrs. Slatter, Mrs. Jordan, and the husbands of the two sisters, Henry Slatter and Ben Jordan. Now we'll see who are these Victoria Slatter and April Mary Weather. So Victoria Slatter is the daughter of is the daughter of Mrs. Slatter and Henry Slatter. Whereas Abel Mary Weather is the father of the two sisters, Mrs. Slatter and Mrs. Jordan. He is the father. Father of the two sisters. So once again, let me explain you the characters. The two main characters here, Mrs. Slatter and Mrs. Jordan. These two are sisters. And Henry Slatter is the husband of Mrs. Slatter. Ben Jordan is the husband of Mrs. Jordan. Victoria Slatter is the daughter of Mrs. Slatter and Hen Henry Slatter. And finally, Abel Mary with her is the father of the two sisters and grandfather of Victoria Slatter. These are the important characters whom we are going to see in this drama. So, when the scene is open, the beginning scene of the drama, when the scene is open it is like this the scene is in the sitting room of a small house in a lower middle class district so the scene when it opens it is very clear that it is a sitting room in a small house it is a sitting room of a small house in a lower middle class district of a provincial 
town means it in a, in a particular area it's a district where a small town is there in that we are going to see the setting the scene of a middle class house on the spectators left is the window with the blinds down so the spectators left side we can see one window which is cut, covered with a curtain blinds here the word blinds means curtains blinds it means curtains a sofa is in the front of it <clears throat> on his right is a fireplace with an armchair by it so here we are seeing which material which which thing is on which side and all the setting the scene of the middle class house in the middle of the wall facing the spectator is the door into the passage to the left of the door a cheap shabby chest of drawers a cheap shabby chest of drawers shabby means dirty so there itself you can see one shabby chest of drawers to the right a sideboard on the right side what is there on the side right side there is a sideboard in the middle of the room is a table so on the right side and left side what all the things are there that we discussed now we'll see what is there in the middle of the room in the middle of the room is a table a table is there in the middle of the room with chairs around it there is a table and few chairs are there around the table ornaments and a chest american clock are on the mantelpiece in the hearth hearth means one more word new word you can see here h e a r t h hearth means fireplace on the mantelpiece means on the shelf you can see a cheap american clock and a hearth means a fireplace you can see a kettle a kettle means a pot by the sideboard a pair of gaudy new carpet slippers are there by the side you can see gaudy slippers carpet slippers gaudy means bright bright colored new carpet slippers are there the table is partly laid for tea and the necessaries for the meal are on the sideboard as also are copies of an evening paper and of tidbits so on the side on the table everything is ready few pieces things are there for the meals they are ready and you can see the papers also here you can see the tidbits tidbits means it is a british weekly magazine founded by george newness in 1881 which was in mass circulation in england it is a circulating mass circulating newspaper tidbits lying on one side and persons weekly this is also a british weekly magazine founded by sir cyril pearson 1866 and 1921 in 1890 these are the two magazines which are lying on the table there turning to the left through the door takes you to the front door if you turn left there is another door door passage which will take you to the front door to the right upstairs in the passage a hat, hat stand is visible so in the on the passage you can see one hat stand it is very clear it is visible you can see a hat stand when the curtain rises so this is the setting of the first scene when the curtain rises there appears mrs slatter is seen lying at table so when the curtain rises you can see mrs slatter lying means mending putting a cloth on the table she is a vigorous plump red faced vulgar woman so here the description of mrs slatter is given though in the first scene when the curtain rises you can see mrs slatter and what type of lady is she this mrs slatter is a vigorous vigorous plump and a vulgar so this lady she is vigorous vigorous means the lady is very strong plump plump means fat how the appearance of mrs slatter she is a fat lady her face is red 
she is a red faced lady and a vulgar woman means who is indecent she is not a decent lady she is an indecent lady is the description given about mrs slatter prepared to do any amount of straight talking to get her own way why the writer described her as a vulgar woman here because her nature is that whatever he thinks in his mind to get it she can talk anything to others that's why the writer here described mrs slatter as a vulgar woman she is in black but not in complete morning so this lady mrs slatter she dressed in black but she is not completely morning morning means morning means grieving means if whenever any person dies in the house a family member the people sit and cry that is called nothing but morning crying out of sadness crying out of sadness is nothing but mourning grieving she listens for a moment and then goes to the window opens it and calls into the street she stands there after lying the table listens for some time and after that she moves towards the window what we have discussed in the first scene itself she goes near the window opens the window and calls out into the street what is she calling we'll see Mrs. Slatter, sharply, Victoria, Victoria, do you hear? Come in. Will you? So, Mrs. Slatter, what is she doing? She opened the window and calling out into the street. Slatter is calling Victoria, asking Victoria is the daughter daughter of Mrs. Slatter. She is calling. Do you hear? Can you hear me? Come in. Is the call given by Mrs. Slatter to? Victoria Mrs Slatter closes window and puts the blind straight and then returns to her work at the table Victoria a precocious girl often dressed in colors enters after opening the window calling Victoria out from the street she closed the window kept the closed the window with a curtain and went back to her own work so after calling like that a girl entered a girl who is that girl none other than victoria slatter a girl victoria entered the house in colored dress and the description of the girl is given she is precocious so precocious what is the meaning of the word precocious a person whose mental attitude is developed beyond his or her age so this girl is so well matured very developed mentally girl she entered and she is dressed in colors mrs slatter is telling like this to victoria i am amazed at you victoria i really am how you can galvanizing about in the street with your grandfather lying dead and cold upstairs i don't know so here mrs slatter got surprised why is she surprised what victoria is doing she is roaming in the street she is going out for a pleasure walk she is trying to seek pleasure so here you can see the word galvanizing which means go about seeking pleasure when the grandfather is lying dead in the house how are you going out how are you going out and roaming is the doubt what mrs slatter got she is she got surprised with the behavior of victoria so i don't know be off now and change your dress before your aunt elizabeth and your uncle ben come so here slatter is advising victoria to go and change her dress here we can clearly understand as the description of slatter is given telling that she is a vigorous plump red faced and vulgar woman see there the scene where slatter's father is lying dead in the room and instead of sitting and crying instead of feeling sad about it she is feeling what her sister when she come over there and see her daughter in a colored dress their sister may feel bad that is the reason why slatter is advising victoria 
to change the dress before the arrival of the aunt and uncle. Here the aunt is Elizabeth Jordan and the uncle is Ben Jordan. It would never do for them to find you in colors. She is not advising her daughter as the father, grandfather is dead. She should be in morning dress but instead of that she is telling that her sister may feel bad seeing her daughter in the colored dress that's the reason why she's asking victoria to change her dress victoria questioned her mother for the reason why her sister is coming because she got a doubt they haven't been here for ages for so many days they did not come to their house so she got a doubt why all of a sudden they are coming here Mrs. Slatter is answering Victoria like this. They are coming to talk over poor grandpa's affairs. So here we can clearly understand the mentality of this lady Mrs. Slatter. She is telling to her daughter uh, why the reason Elizabeth is coming here. It is not because her father is dead. She is telling that her sister is coming to discuss on the poor affairs of her grandfather that means she is mentioning about the property of the grandfather here your father sent them a telegram as soon as we find he was dead who is he he is the father of mrs slatter a noise is heard so when mrs slatter is telling victoria that Victoria's father sent a telegram to Elizabeth and Ben Zordan about the death of their father. So that is the reason why this uncle and aunt are going to come to their house. When Slatter is explaining this to Victoria, they all of a sudden they heard a sound. Good gracious, that's never them. Mrs. Slatter hurries to the door and opens it. She's telling as she advised her daughter to change the dress. She did not go ahead. That's why she's telling good. That is that should not be Elizabeth and Ben Jordan who knocked at the door. She went hurriedly near the door to open to find out who is that knocking the door. No, thank godness. It's only your father. So finally she thanked the goodness of the God because it is not Elizabeth and Ben Jordan who knocked the door. It is the father of Victoria and the husband of Mrs. Latter who knocked at the door. Henry Slatter, a stooping heavy man with a drooping moustache enters. So here comes Henry Slatter, the next character. So the description of Henry Slatter is given. He is a stooping Heavy man with a drooping moustache. He is a stooping means very tall, bending forward, having a moustache. He enters into the house. He is wearing a black tail coat, grey trousers, a black lie and a bowler hat. He carries a little paper parcel. So this man, he enters. Henry Slatter entered the house now and the description of the Slatter is given. Henry, not come at. Hey, Mrs. Slatter, you can see they haven't, can't you? Now, Victoria, be off upstairs and that quick. Put your white frock on with a black sash. So now, immediately after when Henry Slatter entered the house, he questioned whether Elizabeth and Ben Zordon have come or not. Slatter gave the reply in a satirical manner and advised her daughter to go and change her dress and asked her daughter to wear a white dress. Victoria goes out. So with this instruction from her mother, Victoria moved from the scene. Mrs. Slatter telling to Henry, I am not satisfied. But it's the best we can do till our new blacks ready. And Ben and Elizabeth will never have thought about morning yet. So we'll outshine them there. So they are doing, they are busy because Slatter and Henry Slatter are busy in the preparations. What they are supposed to do, what they have to do before the arrival of Elizabeth and Ben Jordan. Get your boots off, Henry. Elizabeth's that praying. She notices the least speak of dirt. So 
Slatter is advising Henry to remove the boots. Telling like that, Elizabeth's that tree means looking keenly, she notices the least peak of dirt, means a small flake of dirt. Henry, I'm wondering if they'll come at all. When you and Elizabeth quarreled, she said she would never set foot in your house again. So many years back when Slatter and Elizabeth quarreled with each other, Elizabeth said that she will never step into their house again. So Henry is questioning Slatter here. Already your sister very seriously told that she will never step into the house. Do you think that they will come now? So for this, Mrs. Slatter is telling like this. She'll come fast enough after her share of what grandfather's left. So Slatter is telling to her husband like this. She will definitely come to take the share what she is going to get from her father. You know how hard she can be when she likes. She is also mentioning that Elizabeth is a so stubborn lady. When she likes anything, she will not leave until she get that. Where she gets it from, I can't tell. So she is also mentioning, Slatter is telling about her sister like this. I don't know from where she got that nature, that stubborn nature. But once when she fixed something in her mind, she wants that to be done. Mrs. Slatter unwraps the parcel Henry has brought. It contains an apple pie which she puts on a dish of the table. Henry, I suppose it's in the family. So Slatter already mentioned about the stubborn nature of Elizabeth for that satirical way of expression Henry is giving. What is he telling? He's telling that I suppose it is in the family. So he says that already the fa in the family all the people are like that. That's the reason why Elizabeth is so stubborn. With this, Slatter feels bad. She says, what do you mean by that, Henry Slatter? So Slatter is questioning, what do you are telling? Because Slatter also belongs to the same family. So she says, what do you say? Henry, he is trying to cover now. He says, I was referring to your father, not to you. Where are my slippers? Henry is telling, he is trying to cover. He is telling that, I am not talking about you. I am talking to about your father. As he is so stubborn, even Elizabeth also got the same nature. Telling like that, immediately he is trying to divert the topic. That is the reason why he is asking for his slippers. Mrs. Slatter, in the kitchen, but you want a new pair. Those old ones are nearly worn out. So here Slatter is telling that your slippers are there in the kitchen. And already previously Henry asked Slatter for, to have a new pair of slippers as the old ones are worn out. Means they got damaged. Means they are not in a proper condition. Nearly breaking down. Worn out means they are nearly breaking down. You don't seem to realize what it's costing me to bear up like I am doing. My heart's fit to break when see the little trifles. Here the word, you need to see the meaning of the word trifles. So trifles means little things that belong to grandfather lying around and think he'll never use them again briskly. Here when they are discussing about the slippers, Henry is asking Slatter to have a new pair of slippers as the old ones are worn out. Seeing the little things of the grandfather, means of her father lying there, she is feeling very bad because they are lying useless as the person is dead in, according to their opinion. As their father is dead, all these small things will be waste. They won't be used by anyone. Seeing that, Slatter is feeling bad. Slatter is feeling very bad about the belongings of her father. As he is dead in their opinion, the things, the belongings of her father will be of no use because nobody will be using them. Here you would better wear the slippers of grandfather's now. It's lucky. He would just got a new pair. 
So here, Slatter is advising her husband to wear the slippers of her father as his father bought his slippers very new and without using them properly only he is dead. That's why here Slatter wants to make the optimum use of the belongings of her father. Henry, they'll be very small for me my dear. So Henry is telling the size is different. The slippers what you have asked me to wear they'll be very small for me. Mrs. Slatter, they'll stretch, won't they? I'm not going to have them wasted. She has finished laying the table. So she is advising her husband, telling that the slippers will be stretched. And she also mentions that she doesn't want to waste those slippers. That's why she is advising her husband to use the same new slippers of her father. Henry, I have been thinking about the bureau of grandfathers in his bedroom. You know, I always wanted to have it after he died. So, Henry is telling to Slatter about the bureau which is lying in the grandfather's room. And he also says that after his death, he wants to use that bureau. What is a bureau here? Bureau is a writing desk with the drawers. B-U-R-E-A-U. -E it is a writing desk. Now the entire story is going to rotate around this bureau. That's why I'm mentioning this once again. Bureau is a writing desk with drawers. Henry wanted to take it after the death of the grandfather. Henry, you must arrange with Elizabeth when you are dividing things up. Henry is telling to slatter to make necessary arrangements when they once sit to divide the belongings or the things of their father. Mrs. Slatter, Elizabeth, the sharp she'll see, I'm after it. And she'll drive a hard bargain over it. Hey, what it is to have a low money, grubbing spirit. So here, this, this is a discussion between Slatter and Henry. Henry already advised Slatter that she need to be very careful while dividing the things of their father. Slatter is telling that the nature of Elizabeth will be in such a way if she understands that the Slatter is behind a particular thing, definitely Elizabeth will also ask or she will also sit in a bargain to take the same thing. Henry, perhaps... She's got your eye on the bureau as well. Henry is telling because Henry and Slatter, they have already decided to take the bureau of their father. They are in a dilemma just thinking if the Elizabeth after her arrival, if she also asks about the birwa, what they have to do. And Slatter doubted that if once Elizabeth understands that she wants to take the bureau, Definitely, Elizabeth will also ask the same thing. Henry, startled. So here, as it is a conversation given here, dialogue by dialogue, even the expressions are also were given in wording. Henry with the expression slattered. Slattered means, so with a slattering expression, Henry is telling, slattered means surprised. Emilia, he rises. Who is Emilia here? A new word we are listening now. Emilia is none other than Mrs. Slatter. Her full name is Mrs. Emilia Slatter. So, rising from the seat, he is telling to Emilia. Mrs. Slatter, Henry, why shouldn't we bring that bureau down here now? We could do it before they come. So, Slatter, Amelia is giving advice to Henry that why don't they shift to the birwa from their father's room before the arrival of Amelia. So, if Elizabeth comes, after the arrival of Elizabeth, if they see the birwa there, definitely she will also ask or she will also try to take the bureau. That is the reason they are planning to shift to the bureau, Amelia Slatter and Henry Slatter are play, planning to take the bureau from the place where it is and they wanted to shift to another place so that Elizabeth won't get any doubt. Henry, stupefied, I won't care too. 
Henry is telling that I am not particular in doing that. Is that needed? He asked. Mrs. Slatter, Henry, why shouldn't we bring that bureau down here now? We could do it before they come. So Slatter is advising Henry that before the arrival of Elizabeth, they can move the bureau from the first floor to the another place so that Elizabeth won't get any doubt. Henry, stupefied. I wouldn't care to. Henry is telling that I am not that particular in doing so. Mrs. Slatter, don't look so daft. Why not? So one more new word we can see here is daft. So here Slatter is telling Henry not to be mad. The word meaning daft is mad. She's as she's telling him don't be mad. This is the precaution what I am taking because they have already made up their mind to take away the bureau. So they wanted to do it before the arrival of Elizabeth. Henry, it doesn't seem delicate somehow. So Henry is telling it is not that delicate. It will be a bit difficult to shift the bureau from their father's room to the downstairs. Mrs. Slatter, we could put that shabby old chest of drawers upstairs where the bureau is now. Elizabeth could have that and welcome. I have always wanted to get rid of it. So they have made one more plan. If they remove the bureau from that place, Elizabeth after coming there, she may get a doubt. That's why they wanted to replace the bureau with the shabby chest of drawers. Shabby, as we have already discussed, the meaning of the word shabby is dirty. Anyhow, Slatter want to get rid of it. What is the meaning of the expression get rid of it? So here the expression get rid of it means if a person or if we don't like anything, we wanted to leave that forever. So that is getting rid of it. The, here Slatter also wants to get rid of the shabby chest of drawers. That's the reason why they wanted to place the chest of drawers in the place of the bureau. So that after the arrival of Amelia, she may ask that she wanted to take it. Henry, suppose they come when we are doing it. Now Henry got one more doubt. When they are shifting this bureau from the roof, all of a sudden if Elizabeth and Ben, if they arrive, what can we do? This is the doubt arised by Henry to Amelia Slatter. Mrs. Slatter, I'll fasten the door, front door. I'll fasten the front door. Fasten means Closing, locking. So Slatter is telling to Henry, don't worry about that. I will close the front door. Get your coat off Henry. We'll change it. So I will fasten the door. You no need to worry about it. You just remove your coat and get ready to shift the bureau. Mrs. Slatter goes out to fasten the front door. Henry takes his coat off. Mrs. Slatter reappears. Oh, telling like this, Mrs. Slatter, she went out to close the door. And by the time she come back, Henry is also trying to remove his coat and getting ready to do the work. Mrs. Slatter, I'll run up and move the chairs out of the way. Now they are making all the preparations what are needed to bring the bureau down. For that, Amelia Slatter, she wanted to go up and make the way clear to bring the bureau down. Victoria appears, dressed according to her mother's instruction. Till now, Victoria is not there in the scene. She went out to change her dress according to the instruction given to her by her mother. Victoria, will you fasten my frock up the back, mother? So, Victoria requested her mother to fasten her frock. But you know very well the mother is busy in some other work. So, let us see what is the reply given by her mother. Mrs. Latter, I am busy. Get your father to do it. See, as we have suspected, the mother gave the same reply. She is very busy in other work. The same thing she told to her doctor and asked her daughter to fasten her frog by her father. Mrs. Latter hurried upstairs and Henry fastens the frog. Mrs. Latter leaving the daughter there itself, she ran. She hurried 
upstairs to clear the way and Henry he started fastening the frock. Victoria what have you got your coat of for father? So Victoria as we have already discussed see she is so cautious and a sharp girl that's why she observed her father without the coat and questioned her father why he has removed his coat. Victoria what have you got your coat of for father. So as we have already discussed Victoria is a sharp and cautious girl. So she observed that the father has removed his coat. That's why she questioned her father for the purpose of removing his coat. Henry, mother and me are going to bring grandfather's bureau downstairs. So for the question of Victoria, his father, her father gave a reply telling that he and her mother are going to bring the bureau of her grandfather down. Immediately, Victoria, let us see what she said. After a moment, moment thought, so Emilia, Emilia thought for a moment and she told like this, are we pinching it before Aunt Elizabeth comes? So how sharp she is. With that statement only, she understood that they are going to do something. That's why she is questioning her father like this. Are we pinching it before Aunt Elizabeth comes? So let us see the meaning of the word pinching. So the meaning of the word here pinching is stealing. So directly... Victoria questioned her father now. Are we going to steal grandfather's bureau before the arrival of the aunt? This is a question asked by Victoria to her father. Henry, shocked. So receiving such a question from his daughter, he was initially shocked. No, my child, grandpa gave it to your mother before he died. So he gave a reply, he is telling that, Grandfather gave that bureau to your mother before his death. Victoria, again she asked a question. This morning, Henry said, yes. Victoria, ha, he was drunk this morning. So she is telling, maybe he did not do that in his conscious. He might have drunk. That's why he gave that bureau to mother. Henry, silence, hush. So to tell silence here, a word hush is used. Hush means silence. You must not ever say was drunk. Now Henry has fastened the frock and Mrs. Slatter appears carrying a handsome clock under her arm. So immediately when Victoria said that the grandfather is drunk, Henry warned him not to say like that. Told him never tell grandfather is drunk. Telling like this, he fastened the frock of Victoria and at the same time, Mrs. Slatter reappeared coming from upstairs to down, keeping one handsome clock under her arm. Mrs. Slatter, I thought I had fetched this down as well. She puts it on the mantelpiece. So, bringing a handsome clock under her arm, Slatter says to Victoria and Henry that she wanted to take that watch. Telling like that, she keeps the clock on the mantelpiece. Mantelpiece means shelf. Are clocks worth nothing and this always appealed to me. She says that the remaining clocks, what all there in the house, she doesn't like them. So this clock she likes a lot. She says that this clock always appealed to me. Appealed. Appealed means charmed. So she was fascinated. She liked this clock always. And she considers that all the remaining clocks are ways. That's a reason why she brought that grandfather's clock down. Victoria, that's grandpa's clock. So this girl is so quick and vigorous. She identified that it is grandfather's clock and she mentioned the same. Mrs. Slatter, chat. 
So, one expression given by slatter. Chat means it's an exclamatory word for silence. So, here slatter is asking Victoria to be silent. Be quiet. It's ours now. So, she is telling Victoria not to say that it is grandfather's. It is ours now. Come Henry, lift your hand. Victoria, don't breathe a word to your aunt about the clock and the bureau. So she asked Henry to come and lift the bureau. At the same time, she also gave a warning to Victoria telling that she should not reveal anything about the clock and bureau to her aunt. They carried the chest of drawers through the doorway. Victoria to herself, I thought we had pinched them. After a short pause, there is a sharp knock at the front door. Victoria is telling again, so I thought we are pinching it. But the parents are denying that, they are not accepting it. So she is telling to herself. Meanwhile, when these people are trying to shift the bureau, there is a sharp knock at the door. That means someone has come and they are knocking at the door. Mrs. Slatter from upstairs. Victoria, if that is your aunt and uncle, you are not to open the door. So here Slatter from the upstairs, she is telling to Victoria, if it is her aunt and uncle, she advised her not to open the door. Victoria peeps through the window. So she need to know first initially who is that knocking the door. So instead of opening the door, what Victoria has done, she went near the window and she is peeping through the window. What is the meaning of the word peep? Peeping means looking. She looked out of the door. She peeps into the window. She looks out from the window to know who is there outside the door. Victoria Mother, it's them. So finally, who is there outside? Elizabeth and Ben Jordan have arrived. So Elizabeth, Victoria told to her mother that it is the uncle and aunt who has come. Mrs. Slatter, you are not to open the door till I come down. Knocking repeated. So immediately when Victoria told to Slatter it is the uncle and aunt who have come, Slatter asked Victoria not to open the door until they come down. So they did not open the door but still knocking is continuing. Let them knock away. There is a heavy bumping noise. So let this, Slatter said let them knock away. While telling that there is a bumping sound. There is a heavy bumping noise. Here bumping means striking. Mind the wall. Henry Henry and Mrs. Slatter, very hot and flushed, stagger in with a pretty old-fashioned bureau containing a locked desk. So here, they, as they are moving the desk, unfortunately the desk touched the wall and there is a bumping, striking sound. So immediately, Slatter warned Henry, telling, mind the wall. Mind the wall means... Mind the wall means take care of the wall. As they, it got stuck up to the wall, there is a bumping sound. So Slatter is asking Henry to take care of the wall. Henry and Mrs. Slatter, very hot and flush, stagger in with a pretty old-fashioned bureau containing a long desk. Henry and Slatter, they are trying to lift a bureau which has a locked desk. So they got flushed and staggered. Flushed. So flushed means agitated. Stagger. Stagger means fall. So, as they got exhausted lifting a heavy weight, they have staggered. They got exhausted in with this bureau. They put it where the chest of drawers was and straightened the ornaments, etc. The knocking is repeated. So, finally, Henry and Slatter, they brought the bureau from the first floor and they kept the place where the chest of drawers is. They replaced the chest of drawers with the bureau. And they have straightened the ornaments. What all the things are there on the bureau, they have kept them straight. 
Still the knocking is repeated. Mrs. Slatter, that was a near thing. Open the door, Victoria. Now Henry, get your coat on. She helps him. So now as the business is completed, what they thought of doing, they have done that. That's why Slattery asked Victoria to open the door. At the same time, she also gave an advice to Henry to put on the coat and even she helped him to put on it. Henry, did we knock much plaster of the wall? So now they are thinking, did they create any damage to the wall while bringing the bureau down? Because they knocked the bureau to the wall, they might have removed the plaster of the wall. Mrs. Slatter, never mind the plaster. Do I look all right? Straightening her hair at the glass. So now Slatter is not worrying about the damage what they have created to the wall. Instead of that, she is looking at her own appearance. She is straightening her hair, looking into a glass. Just watch Elizabeth's face when she sees we are all in half modeling. So why is she bothered about her appearance? She want when Elizabeth saw them, Elizabeth should feel as if they are in a sad mood. They should appear as if they are crying. Throwing him tidbits, take this and sit down. So after her arrangement everything, she gave the magazine. As we have discussed, tidbits is a magazine which is lying there. Giving that to Henry, asked him to sit down there. Try and look as if we had been waiting for them. Now they want to create an appearance as if these people are in a sad mood and they are, they are waiting for Elizabeth and Ben. Henry sits in the armchair and Mrs. Slatter left off table. They read ostentatiously. Victoria ushers in Ben and Mrs. Jordan. So, ostentatiously is the word for which you need to know the meaning. So, here the meaning of the word ostentatiously is showily. Showily means actually they are not in the business of sitting and feeling bad or they are not that cool previously. But now to show it to Elizabeth as if they are sitting and waiting for them and they are in a sad mood, they are creating the appearance, means they are making the entire scene as if they are feeling bad and waiting for them. That's why they are doing it for showily, to show to Elizabeth and Ben. Victoria ushers in Ben and Mrs. Jordan ushers. Means brings in. So ushers means to bring in. Here Slatter, she brought Elizabeth and Ben into the house. The latter is a stout, complacent woman with an impassive and an irritating air of being always right. Here the description of Elizabeth is given. So Elizabeth is a lady who is stout. Stout means strong and complacent complacent means satisfied complacent means satisfied women with an impassive so impassive Impassive means not active and an irritating irritating means creating anger. So here this is the description given by Elizabeth. Elizabeth is a stout, complacent, impassive and irritating women creating angry. Why she is irritating? Because she is of always being right. She says whatever she says she will argue that she is right. She is wearing a complete and deadly outfit of new morning crowned by a great black hat with plums. So she worn, she has worn a deadly. Deadly means deep. Deadly means deep. 
outfit of new morning crowned crown means decorated with decorated with a great black hat with plums means feathers how is the hat of elizabeth now it is crowned with plums means it is crowned with feathers ben is also in complete new morning with black gloves and a band round his hat he is rather a jolly little man accustomed to be humorous accustomed it is another word accustomed accustomed means in the habit of so ben is a person a little man who got accustomed and to be humorous humorous means fun loving humorous fun loving but at present trying to adapt himself to the regrettable occasion so now even though he loves fun now he cannot play jokes here because the situation here a person is dead it is a regrettable occasion means sad they should feel bad now because a person is dead that's why even though he is a humorous person he is molding himself to the situation he has a bright chirpy little voice chirpy means this person is basically a talkative person chirpy means talking this person ben is a good talkative person Ben sails into the room and solemnly goes straight to Mrs. Slater and kisses her. So after entering entering here directly solemnly solemnly means seriously without making any jokes or very seriously he enters into the house goes near the Slater and kisses her. The men shake hands not a word is spoken Mrs Slater furtively inspects the new morning another word the meaning what you have to see here is here is furtively means silently so what elizabeth is doing now ben has already gone and wished both slater and Amelia whereas Elizabeth silently observing the morning situation Mrs Jordan well Amelia and he is gone at last so Jordan Ben Jordan he is telling finally he is gone finally he is dead who is the dead here the father of Slater and Elizabeth is dead Mrs Slater yes he is gone he was 72 a fortnight last sunday she sniffs back a tear so the age of their person their father is 72 years last sunday only he crossed 72 years telling like this she cries she leaves some tears mrs jordan sits on the left of the table mrs slater on the right henry in the armchair ben on the sofa with victoria near him ben chirpily now amelia you must not give way we have all got to die sometime or other it might have been worse so here ben is trying to console slater as slater is crying now ben is telling one day or the other everybody will die that's why you should make up your mind see here you must not give up here the word give up means surrender you should not surrender yourself for the situation one day or the other every human being will die you should not surrender yourself to the situation mrs slater i don't see how so mrs slater is telling how can i overcome this sadness 
Well, it might have been one of us. Maybe sometimes it happens to everybody. Henry, it is taken you a long time to get here, Elizabeth. Mrs. Jordan, oh, I couldn't do it. I really couldn't do it. Elizabeth, because for a long time she did not come to that house. So you have taken a long time to come back. Slatter is telling and Jordan said, we couldn't come as we are busy with some other work. We couldn't come. Mrs. Slatter, suspiciously, couldn't do what? Suspiciously means with suspicion, Slatter is asking them. Jordan, I couldn't start without getting the morning, glancing at her sister glancing the word glancing here means looking so without morning means without any serious news they cannot come here that's why they did not turn up mrs slatter we have ordered ours you may be sure I never could fancy buying ready-made things. So they are talking about the belongings now. They are talking about the things. Mrs. Jordan, no. For myself, it is such a relief to get into the black. And now perhaps you will tell us all about it. What did the doctors say? So they have discussed about the things. And now Jordan asked Slatter, to explain the situation, how it happened. It means the death of their father. Mrs. Slatter, who? Oh, he is not been near at. Mrs. Jordan, not been near. So, Jordan asked Slatter whether they have sent the message to the doctor. Means with the doctor's approval only, they can decide whether the person is dead or not. So, for that, Slatter, Slatter said that the doctor is not near and they questioned, not be near, what does it mean? Ben, in the same breath, didn't you send for him at once? Means, didn't they send for the message for the doctor? Mrs. Slatter, of course I did. Do you take me for a fool? I sent Henry at once to Dr. Pringle, but he was out. Slatter is telling that, do you think that I am a fool? I have sent Henry to bring Dr. Pringle. Ben, you should have gone for another. Hey, Eliza. So, as Henry has gone for Dr. Pringle, as he is out, Ben is asking them, why you did not go for another doctor? Mrs. Jordan, oh yes, it is a fatal mistake. Jordan is telling that as they did not go for another doctor, it is a fatal mistake. Fatal here means very serious mistake. What they have done? What is that mistake? When they have tried to approach a doctor and they observe that the doctor is not there, they might have called another doctor, but they did not do it. So here, Jordan is telling that it is a fatal, means a serious mistake done by them. Mrs. Startle, Pringle attended him when he was alive and Pringle shall attend him when he is dead. That's professional etiquette. So here, professional etiquette means it's a manners of the Profession. What Slatter says when they, his father is alive, it is Dr. Pringle who took care of him. That is why it is the professional manners that after the death also the same doctor should come and see him. Ben, well, you know your own business best. But Mrs. Jordan, yes, it's a fatal mistake. Ben is telling that you know your business, you know what you have to do. But Jordan is telling that it is a mistake what they have done. Mrs. Slatter, don't talk so silly. Elizabeth, what good could a doctor have done? Slatter is telling to Elizabeth, why are you talking like that? Even if we call any other doctor also, what can they do to a dead person? They cannot bring him alive. Mrs. Jordan, look at my cases of persons being restored to life hours after they were thought to be gone. So, Jordan is giving some reference here when Slatter told to Elizabeth that even if we call the doctor, the dead person cannot be alive. So, when Slatter mentioned this, immediately Jordan was telling that there are few cases where 
after the decision is made that a person is dead after few hours they have restored see here look at many cases of persons being restored restored what is the meaning of the word restored given back restoring coming back of life so look at many cases there are so many cases where persons after decided that they are dead they got restored of life hours after they were thought to be gone gone the meaning of the word gone here is dead died henry that's when they have been drowned your father wasn't drowned elizabeth henry is telling maybe that thing happened when a person drowned in the water but here your father is not drowned in the water when humorously there wasn't much fear of that if there was one thing he couldn't bear it was water here when as we know he is a humorous person he will make comedy out of anything that's why he's telling that here we don't have such fear of drowning because their father he will never go into the water Mrs. Jordan, pain. Ben immediately Jordan is correcting her husband because it is not the situation where they can play jokes. Ben is crushed at once. Crushed means he became silent all of a sudden. Mrs. Latter, pinked. I'm sure he washed regular enough. So immediately Latter is telling that even though he is frightened of water, gen regular bath he will take. Mrs. Jordan, if he did take a drop. too much at times we will not dwell on that now so even if we take too much also we don't remain on that that is not the discussion what they are supposed to do at that time mrs slatter father is merry this morning he went out soon after breakfast to pay his insurance merry so the word merry here says that he is joyful so he is happy father is happy joyful in the morning and after the breakfast he went out to pay the premium of the insurance ben my word it's a good thing he did now they got some relief they are very happy that before the death he paid the premium of insurance mrs jordan he always was thoughtful in that way he was too honorable to have gone without paying his premium so they are praising him for doing that now what are they thinking he is so honorable he is really a great person the timely he pays his insurance premium so he is praising them as he had paid the premium before his death mrs latter well he must have gone around to the ringo bells afterwards for he came in as merry as a sand boy i says we are only waiting for henry to start dinner dinner he says i don't want dinner i am going to bed slatter said that after paying the insurance he had gone to ringo bells ringo bells is a restaurant and from there he came back as a as merry as a sand boy as merry as a sand boy means extremely happy and cheerful when the father came back from ringo bells he is extremely happy and cheerful so they welcomed him for the dinner but he denied to have the dinner and he went to bed ben ha dear so telling like that ben is listening what slatter is telling henry and when i came in i found him undressed sure enough and snug in bed he rises and stands on the hat rug here the way it's snug when henry henry entered the room he found mr abel nicely comfortably sleeping on the bed snug here means comfortable mrs jordan yes he had a warning i'm sure of that did he know you henry yes he spoke to me Mrs Jordan did he say he had a warning Henry no he said Henry would you mind taking my boots off i forgot before i got into 
bed. So when Henry entered the room, he is lying. Abel is lying on the bed comfortably. So immediately Jordan questioned him. He might have given some warning to Henry about the health condition of Abel. Henry said he did not give any such warning. Rather, he spoke to Henry. Abel spoke to Henry. What did Abel say? Abel just asked Henry to remove his shoes as he has forgotten to remove them before going to the bed. Mrs. Jordan, he must have been wandering. Henry, no, he had got M on all right. So, Henry is asking, Jordan is asking to Henry. He might have been wandering somewhere. Henry said, no, he is quite okay, quite well, quite all right. Mrs. Latter, and when we had finished dinner, I thought I would take up a bit of something on a tray. He was lying there for all the world as if he was asleep. So I put the tray down on the bureau, correcting herself on the chest of drawers and went to waken him. A pause. He was quite cold. So here Slatter as Abel directly went to bed. After having the dinner, Slatter thought of giving dinner to her father. So he took the plate of father and entered the room of her father and she identified him lying sleeping on the bed. So he, she immediately went near him and tried to wake him up by touching his body and she felt the body is so cool. Henry, then I heard Amelia calling for me and I ran upstairs. So she was telling, I, by the time I went there, when I observed my father sleeping on the bed, I kept the plate on the bureau and immediately she corrected. At that time, bureau is there, but now not, it is not there. Instead of bureau, chest of drawers is there. So immediately she corrected her words. So telling, I kept my plate on the chest of drawers and went near him to wake him up. By the time she touched the body of Abel, it is so cool. So she got frightened and she shouted. Hearing to the shouting of slatter, Henry came running to the upstairs. Mrs. Slatter, of course we could do nothing. Slatter was telling nothing is there in our hand to do at that time. Mrs. Jordan, he was gone. So only the reason what they have found there, the man is lying on the bed. And the second one is the body is so cool. So Slatter came to a conclusion that he is dead. He is gone. Henry, there wasn't any doubt. Henry was telling there is no doubt the man is dead. Mrs. Jordan, I always knew he had go sudden in the end. Jordan is telling that I always knew all of a sudden one day he will pass away like that. Mrs. Latter, rising briskly at length in a business like tone. Well, will you go up and look at him now or shall we have tea? Slatter is asking now. Well, anyhow, he has passed away. Will you go and look at him once or do you want to have tea? Mrs. Jordan, what do you say, Ben? Ben, I am not particular. Mrs. Jordan, well, then, if the kettle's ready, we may as well have tea first. So, when Slatter asked Jordan to go and see Abel once, Jordan said he is not particular. He is not very particular to see him at that time. So, finally, they came to a conclusion first they will have tea and later on they will go and watch him, watch the body of Mr. Abel. Henry, one thing we may as well decide now, the announcement in the papers. Mrs. Jordan, I was thinking of that, what would you put? Generally, whenever any person dies, the people will give just one ad in the newspaper so that they can inform everybody about the incident happened. So now they are also thinking about the newspaper ad, what they have to give. Ben, the drunken old beggar. Mrs. Slatter, after the residence of his daughter, 235 Upper Corn Bank Street, etc. Slatter is telling what they should, they can give in the ad. She is telling, Slatter is telling the address of the house in which they are living now. Henry, you wouldn't care for a bit of poetry. Mrs. Jordan, I like never forgotten. 
it's refined so here they are discussing about what the title they can give in the ad in the newspaper along with the address they can give some title so here jordan suggested one title he said never forgotten so uh, about the advertisement they can give a one poetry or just one line indicating the message they wanted to give it as never forgotten here jordan is telling this line is refined what is the meaning of the word refined so here the meaning of the word refined is very good he says according to the opinion of mr jordan the phrase never forgotten the line never forgotten is very good henry yes but it's rather soon for that ben you couldn't very well have forgotten him the day after so ben is telling why uh, jordan has mentioned like that why he has mentioned like that because immediately after the death of a person we cannot forget him in all of a sudden the next day itself so he wanted to give the phrase never forgotten mrs slatter i always fancy a loving husband a kind father and a faithful friend slatter suggested one more line telling that his her father is a loving husband a kind father and a faithful friend ben do you think that's right so ben immediately questioned slatter do you think it's right to give such a lengthy title henry i don't think it matters whether it's right or wrong here henry is telling that they don't want to worry whether it is right or wrong they want to give the line in such a way where the line reflects their inner feelings mrs jordan no it's more for the look of the thing jordan is telling that not only our feelings even we have to consider the look also how it will be if by giving certain title henry i saw a verse in the evening newspaper yesterday proper poetry it was rhymed he gets the paper and reads despised and forgotten by some you may be but the spot that contains you is scared to we so according to henry what he did the pre in on the previous day he saw one line in the newspaper so immediately he brought the newspaper and he was reading the line for everybody in the line it is given like this despised so what is the meaning of the word despised d s p i s e d so despised means hated despised and forgotten by some you may be but the spot that contains you is scared to to we scared so another word for which we need to know the meaning scared means feared so this is the line what is suggested by mr henry mrs jordan that will never do you don't say scared to we henry it's in the paper mrs slatter you would not say it if you were speaking properly but it's different in poetry so they are taking immediately jordan mrs jordan has taken a negative meaning from out of the word and slatter and henry are trying to convince jordan telling that the poetic meaning will be different henry poetic license you know so henry is telling that the poetic license what is the meaning of the word poetic license freedom to change facts or rules of language in poetry few words we use in such a way where the meaning will be quite opposite so the same point is mentioned by henry here mrs jordan no that will never do we want a verse that says how much we loved him and refers to all his good qualities and says what a heavy loss we have had jordan is telling that no no that is not good to give such a poetic line the line should reflect the love what we have on him and how much of pain we have because the loss of the person and it should reflect as if we are not going to forget him forever so this is the idea of mr jordan mrs jordan is telling that the line should reflect their feelings mrs slatter you want a whole poem that will cost a good lot so when they give any ad in the newspaper line every line need to be counted because the people will charge for every line so here slatter is telling that do you want us to give the complete poetry then we need to pay so much of money mrs jordan well we'll think about it after tea 
and when we look through this bits of things and make a list of them there's all the furniture in his room jordan is telling okay we'll think about the ad later on and we'll have tea now after the tea we'll think and decide about the things what all there in his room what we have to do about the things what all there in father's room henry there is no jewelry and valuables of that sort mrs jordan accept his gold watch he promised that to our jimmy mrs latter promise to your jimmy i never heard of that mrs jordan ho oh, but he did amelia when he was living with us he was very fond of jimmy now here rise the point as their father is dead up they are not worried or they are not bothered to go and see even the body also instead of that they are discussing all the other things and finally they reached to the belongings of her father so finally the two sisters they started discussing about the things of the father and there comes the topic of the golden watch of their father immediately when the point of golden watch comes mrs jordan is telling that when abel used to live with their family now abel is with mrs and mr slatter but previously before coming to their house abel used to live with mr and mrs jordan so what jordan is mention here mentioning here she is telling that when he was living with us he promised that he will give that gold watch to our kid and what is the name of that kid he is none other than jimmy so when jordan mentioned like this slatter is questioning promised to your jimmy i never heard of that slatter is telling that when our father promised your jimmy that he will give the golden watch i never heard anything of that mrs jordan ho oh, but he did amelia when he was living with us he was very fond of jimmy so jordan is telling no no you don't know that when he was li living with us he likes jimmy very much he used to love jimmy very much so at that time he promised jimmy that he will give his golden watch to him mrs slatter well amazed i don't know again slatter said i don't know when he had promised like that ben anyhow there is his insurance money have you got the receipt for the premium he paid this morning ben questioned now about the money the insurance money what he had paid about the premium that morning as slatter already mentioned in the previous lines itself that in the morning father is merry he is very joyful he got ready and went out to pay the insurance premium so recollecting that ben now he is asking slatter whether they got the premium receipt the receipt of the premium what abel had paid in that morning mrs slatter i have not seen it slatter is telling i did not see any receipt victoria mother i don't think grandpa went to pay his insurance this morning immediately victoria is telling that i don't think so that grandfather has gone to pay the insurance mrs slatter he went out mrs slatter is repeatedly telling that in the morning his her father went out victoria yes but he did not go into the town he met old mr tattersall down the street and they went off past saint philip's church victoria is telling that it's true that he went out but he did not go to pay the premium instead of that down the street abel met mr tattersall and both of them they went to philip's church mrs slatter to the ringo bells i'll be bound so here ringo bell means it is the name of a restaurant slatter immediately questioned did they go to a restaurant ringo bells ben the ringo bells mrs slatter the public house so ringo bells is a public house what is a public house it is a pub a place where it is licensed to sell alcoholic beverages it is a public house that john shops widow keeps he is always hanging about there who oh, if he hasn't paid it slatter is telling that they there only one widow stays and her name is john shrocks so this person is wandering in that place regularly they thought that he did not pay the bill of the things what he used there that's why he might have gone there ben do you think he hasn't paid it 
was it overdue mrs slatter i should think it was overdue ben immediately question is it overdue he did not pay the money slatter also confirmed that maybe it is overdue he did not pay the money mrs jordan something tells me he is not paid it i have a warning i know it he is not paid it jordan is telling definitely that is the reason definitely he did not pay the bill and that is the reason why he is going to that restaurant frequently ben the drunken old beggar see previously first time when slatter was telling everyone that their father has gone out to pay the premium they felt that he is a great person great man but now when they realize that he did not pay the bills properly and they are overdue so ben is scolding abel like this the drunken old beggar he is scolding he is telling them as a old beggar mrs jordan he has done it on purpose just to annoy us finally they came to a conclusion that this man abel did not pay the insurance premium so they started scolding him and they also have come to a conclusion that wantedly he did it to annoy them what is the meaning of the word annoy annoy means getting anger so make angry here the word annoy means make anger angry so just to make them angry he did not pay the insurance this is said by mrs jordan mrs slatter after all i have done for him having to put up with him in the house this 3 years it's nothing sort of swindling slatter is telling that see how many things i have done for the father for the past 3 years i kept him in the house and i'm taking care of everything but it's nothing sort of swindling here the word meaning of the word swindling swindling means deceiving deceiving means cheating she is telling that see i have been done so many things for him for the past in the past 3 years but he deceived me he cheated me without paying the premium of his insurance mrs jordan i had to put up with him for 5 years immediately jordan is telling he stayed with you only for 3 years but with me he lived for 5 years mrs slatter and you were trying to turn him over to us all the time slatter is telling okay okay he stayed 5 years with you but all the time you were trying to send him to us i know what you have done so this is the way the both the sisters are discussing henry but we don't know for certain that he is not paid the premium so when these sisters are talking like that immediately henry interfered and telling that it is not confirmed whether he paid the premium or not mrs jordan i do it's come over me all at once that he hasn't jordan is telling i know i know i know everything in my mind my sisters is telling that he did not pay the premium mrs slatter victoria run upstairs and fetch that bunch of keys that's on your grandpa's dressing table so slatter what she did she immediately instructed victoria to go to upstairs and get the bunch of keys which are kept on the table victoria with less courage means timidly in grandpa's room so victoria as she is a small girl they knew very well who what is there in grandpa's room when dead body is there that's why she got frightened so timidly means without any courage she is telling in grandpa's room mrs slatter yes victoria i don't like to immediately victoria rejected to go to grandpa's room why she got frightened she is afraid of going there mrs slatter don't talk so silly there is no one can hurt you victoria goes out reluctantly we'll see if he is locked the receipt up in the bureau slatter is telling that what slatter asked victoria to do now she asked victoria to go to the upstairs and bring the keys which keys she is asking to bring she is asking to bring the keys of the bureau because previously the bureau is used to be in that room only but as they carried it down she has forgotten everything and she is telling directly we'll check whether the receipt is there in the bureau and to open the bureau she asked victoria to go and fetch the keys even though reluctantly means even though she doesn't like going there reluctantly she went there what is the meaning of the word reluctant 
reluctantly so reluctantly means unwillingly unwillingly when in where in this thing he rises and examines it so ben immediately caught what slatter said immediately he rises and he is telling that is it the receipt there in the bureau the bureau is there near them so he got up and he started examining the bureau mrs jordan also rising where did you pick that up amelia it's new since last i was here they examined closely jordan is telling from where did you bring this i think it is new last time when i come to your house it is not there in your house telling like this jordan started examining that mrs slatter o oh, henry picked it up one day slatter is telling okay okay one day i purchased this bureau mrs jordan i like it it's artistic Did you buy it at an auction? Mrs. Jordan is telling that it is artistic. Which is artistic? The bureau which they are examining now. Mrs. Jordan is telling that it is artistic. Artistic means full of art. So Jordan got a doubt and asked Slater, "Did you buy it in a auction?" Henry, "Hey, where did I buy it, Amelia?" Mrs. Slater, yes, at an auction. Immediately, Henry is asking, "Where did I buy this?" And Slater told to Henry that they bought it in the auction. Ben, ho, oh, second hand. Mrs. Jordan, don't show your ignorance. Ben, all artistic things are second hand. Look at those old masters. Jordan, Mrs. Jordan is telling. when ben question is it second hand as they have already mentioned that they purchased it in auction so ben question is it second hand immediately jordan is telling all artistic and old things they'll get only second hand only see how the artistic work in the inscript on the bureau victoria mother mother mrs latter what is it child victoria grandpa is getting up ben what so you know very well where is victoria she went into grandpa's home grandpa's room to fetch the keys so from there frightened running at victoria crying telling that grandpa is getting up mrs latter what do you say victoria grandpa is getting up mrs jordan the child is so crazy here crazy means mad crazy means mad victoria is telling coming back running she is telling everyone that the grandpa is getting up these people couldn't believe what victoria is telling that's why they are telling that this girl is so crazy mrs latter don't talk so silly don't you know your grandfather's dead latter immediately telling to victoria why are you talking like that why are you so silly don't you know that he is dead a dead person how can he get up Victoria no no he is getting up i saw him even after slatter say like that also victoria with confirmation she is telling that grandpa is getting up they are transfixed with amazement ben and mrs jordan left of table victoria clings to mrs slatter right of the table henry near fireplace so this is the placing of the people in the room all of them got transfixed transfixed in the sense they got fixed to the ground mrs jordan you had better go up and see for yourself amelia jordan asked amelia do one thing you go up and see what is happening there mrs latter here come with me henry henry draws back terrified ben suddenly hissed listen so when jordan asked slatter to move slatter is asking henry also to come with her when they are in this discussion some sound they heard we'll see what is that sound they look at the door a slight chuckling is heard outside the door opens revealing an old man clad in a faded but gay dressing gown he is in his stockings feet although over 70 he is vigorous and well colored his bright malicious eyes twinkle under his heavy reddish gray eyebrows 
he is obviously either grandfather abel merryweather or else his ghost so here we heard a sound immediately when these people who got direct seriously got involved in a discussion they turned back they started paying attention towards the sound here they saw a old man even the old vigorous and in a colorful dress coming down from the upstairs here few words were used to describe the old man the new words here are revealing r e v a l i n g so the word meaning revealing here is showing an old man and clad the word clad means cloth faded faded discolored discolored and stockinged stockinged in long socks in long socks vigorous strong malicious malicious means mischievous obviously obviously means clearly so here if you can analyze these words you can get a clear description of mr abel the grandfather so abel he is coming revering means showing so what type of appearance is coming his cloth and the clothes are discolored and he is wearing a long socks it's very strong and he is having a mischievous look and very clearly we can see that it is none other than mr abel merry weather abel what's the matter with little vicky he sees ben and mrs jordan hello what brings you here how is yourself ben so abel immediately when he's coming to the downstairs is asking what happened to vicky because previously whenever she saw her grandfather she never behaved like this how she behaved now because now she was thinking that he is dead so she got horrified when she saw her grandfather getting up from the bed that is the actual situation of victoria but abel he doesn't know anything that's why he got a dilemma in questioning what happened to victoria and why is she behaving like that when he is telling like this he observed jordan mr and mrs jordan there so they are asking what ben is doing there abel trusts his hand at ben who skips back smartly and retreats to a safe distance below the sofa telling what ben is doing here this old man goes near to ben and keeps his hand on the shoulder of mr ben ben immediately moves a little back and keeps himself same safe in a distance mrs slatter approaching abel gingerly grandfather is that you she she pokes him with her hand to see if he is solid mrs slatter coming near to her father she is unable to get the conclusion that really it is his fa her father or not that's why in a dilemma coming near to him she is poking him with her finger touching the body and observing really he is a human being or not able irritated by the whispering he got irritated he got angry of course it's me don't do that melia what the devil do you mean by this tom foolery so here abel is telling he got irritated with the behavior of his members of the family as they are coming and poking with a finger and uh, unable to believe their eyes their dilemma question mark faces he seeing this abel got irritated and he is telling to emilia that he is of course he is me it is me 
don't do that he is asking slatter not to behave like that and he is telling what the devil do you mean by this tom foolery here tom foolery means foolish behavior the way they are behaving tom foolery means foolish behavior so they are behaving so foolishly in the point of view of mr abel mrs slatter to the others he is not dead so now mrs slatter after poking him with a finger she came to a conclusion that he is not dead that's why she is telling to the remaining people that he is not dead ben doesn't seem like that still ben is still there in dilemma he is telling that it doesn't seem like that to him so he is thinking that the ghost of mr abel has arrived there abel you have kept away long enough lizzy and now you have come you don't seem over pleased to see me abel he is telling that from a long time jordan and ben they did not come to their house elizabeth and ben they did not come to their house so after a long time they are seeing their father so they should feel happy but ben did not saw any such type of feeling in their face so he is questioning them after a long time you see me seeing me you should feel happy are you not feeling happy mrs jordan you took us by surprise father are you keeping quite well jordan is telling that we got surprised to seeing you are you well are you okay jordan is questioning her father abel trying to catch the words hey what mrs jordan are you quite well so abel is trying to catch the words the inner meaning of their words so he asked what what are you questioning me so again mrs jordan posed the same question she was asking him are you quite well abel a i am right enough but for a habit of a headache abel is telling i am quite all right i don't have any problem i just got headache i wouldn't mind betting that i am not the first in this house to be carried to the cemetery he is telling that he 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 if it is needed he want to bet that he is not the first person who is going to die i always think henry there looks none too healthy so abel is telling that i am quite healthy and quite all right i am not going to pass away soon i think it will be henry because he looks he doesn't look healthy mrs jordan well i never abel crosses to the armchair henry gets out of his way to the front of the table abel melia what the dickens did i do with my new slippers abel when henry is moving when abel is coming near the chair henry moved and he gave place to abel so while in this moment abel observed the slippers what henry has worn so actually those slippers are abel slippers slatter as she thought that her father is dead so she gave the slippers to henry so seeing the slippers abel is telling like this melia what the dickens did i do with my new slippers here the word dickens means the i c k e n s dickens dickens means it's a informal way of saying that you are annoyed or surprised annoyed or surprised it is an informal way of telling that you are annoyed or surprised abel is telling that he got angry seeing his slippers with henry slatter mrs slatter she is totally confused now she is not able to understand what she should say aren't they by the heart grandfather so slatter is telling i think your slippers are there near the fireplace abel i don't see them observing henry trying to remove the slippers why you have got m on henry when abel is asking about the slippers henry is trying to remove them from his feet so abel question why what are you doing with my slippers mrs slatter promptly i told him to put them on to stretch them they were that new and hard now henry mrs slatter snatches the slippers from henry and gives them abel 
who puts them on and sits in armchair. Slatter promptly what she did. She immediately dragged, snatched the slippers from Henry and gave them back to her father. Mrs. Jordan to Ben. Well, I don't call that delicate. Stepping into a dead man's shoes in such hasty. So the entire scene is being observed by Ben. So finally, Jordan and Ben, after observing to that, Jordan is telling to Ben, I don't find all this so silly. They are stepping into the dead man's shoes. Means they are trying to grab all the things of my father. So Jordan told to Ben. Victoria, oh grandpa, I am so glad you are not dead. So as Victoria is a small girl, she may not be knowing that much of politics what the parents are playing. She is so frank and fair. That's why she directly questioned grandfather telling that she feels very happy as her grandfather is not dead. Mrs. Slatter, hold your tongue Victoria. So immediately Slatter is trying to correct Victoria telling don't talk like that. Abel, hey, what's that? Who is gone dead? Abel is asking, what is that you are speaking? Who is that gone dead? Mrs. Slatter, loudly, Victoria says she is sorry about your head. Here Victoria already mentioned that she is feeling happy as her grandfather is not dead. Now Slatter is trying to correct the sentence made by her daughter. So she is telling that she is concerned about your head because Abel has already mentioned that he got headache. Slatter is trying to convert the topic. Abel, ha, huh, thank you, Vicky, but I am feeling better. So Abel, he believed the words said by Slatter and he is thanking Victor, Vicky, means Victoria, as she is so concerned. And he is telling that now he is feeling better. Mrs. Slatter to Mrs. Jordan, he is so fond of Victoria. Slatter is telling to Jordan that her father is so fond of, her father likes Victoria very much. Mrs. Jordan to Mrs. Slatter. Yes, he is fond of her Jimmy too. Jordan immediately, she is giving a retort to Slatter telling that yes, yes, father is, uh, father likes Jordan, Jimmy also very much. Jimmy is the son of Jordan and Ben, whereas Victoria is the daughter of Slatter and Henry. Mrs. Slatter, you would better ask him if he promised your Jimmy his gold watch. So as the discussion went on previously about the gold watch of their father, it is mentioned that the father promised them that he will give the gold watch to Mr. Jimmy. So now Slatter is reminding Jordan, asking Jordan to question, means ask the father, did really he promise that he is going to give his gold watch to Jimmy? Mrs. Jordan, I couldn't just now. I don't feel equal to it. Abel, why? Ben, you are in mourning, and Lizzie too, and Melia and Henry, and little Vicky. Who is gone dead? It's some, someone in the family. He chuckles. Abel, seeing the condition of all the people, he understands that something bad happened. All the people are feeling very bad. So he is questioning what is the reason behind their mourning, the way of their dressing and their facial expressions, everything revealed to Abel as if they are mourning. So he questioned what happened, is there anyone in the family is dead, why the, all the people there are mourning. This is a question given by Mr. Abel. Mrs. Slatter, no one you know father, a relation of Ben's. So as he directly questioned the reason of their mourning, they have to say some lie. So that's the reason Mrs. Slatter is telling no one he knew, no one Abel knew. A person who is a relative to Ben has dead. Abel, and what relation of Ben's? Mrs. Slatter, his brother. Abel questioned what type of relation does Ben had with the dead person? Immediately Slatter is telling that the dead person is Abel's brother. Ben, to Mrs. Slatter, hang it, I never had one. In actually, Ben, he doesn't have any brothers. So as Slatter is going on lying to her father, Ben is telling that I don't have any brother. Abel, dear, dear, and what was his name? Ben, immediately Abel is questioning what is the name of the person who is dead? Actually, there is no such person. No one is dead. 
Slatter told some lies. She is lying to her father just to save the situation, just to convert the situation. So immediately Abel, he did not stop listening to that. He started going into the details. So here Abel is questioning Ben, asking what is the name of the person who is dead. Ben, at a loss, er, er, he crosses to front of table. Ben, now he did not understand what he should do what he should say because no such person is there and how can he give a name to a person who is not there so he's totally confused and he's in a state where he cannot say anything mrs slatter hour of table prompting frederick some of the other names she has to create now that's why she's telling frederick jordan said albert so they said only one person is dead. A single person can't have two names. Two people gave two different names here. Slatter gave Frederick and Jordan is telling Albert as the two names have come. So finally, Ben, he need to answer Abel now. So he joined both the names and he gave one more new word. What did he say? And Fred Al Isaac is the name given by Ben, Abel, Isaac. And where did your brother Isaac die? So again, the man is going on asking questions. Initially, he asked about the name of the dead person. Somehow they managed and they gave one name. Now he's asking the place where the person is dead. Ben, in, uh, in Australia, something he tried to say. And finally, he concluded the place name as Australia. Abel, dear, dear, he had been older than you. Hey, Abel is asking, is he older than you? Ben, yes, he is older by five years. The person who is dead is older to Mr. Ben by five years. Abel, A, A, are you going to the funeral? Funeral is the last treatment what they do to the person who is dead. So Abel is asking Ben whether he is going to attend the funeral or not. Ben said, yes, I am going to attend the funeral. Mrs. Slatter and Mrs. Jordan, no. Immediately, Ben is telling yes, whereas Slatter and Jordan, they are telling no, because no such thing is going to happen. Ben, no, of course not. So, immediately, Ben also covered his word from yes to no. Finally, he said no. He retires to L. Abel, rising. Well, I suppose we have only been waiting for me to begin tea. I am feeling hungry as these people all instead of going and seeing the dead body initially they thought of having the tea so all the kettle cups everything are ready there seeing that abel is telling that we'll go and have a tea maybe you people are waiting for me to have the tea as i have come here and i'm so hungry let us have the tea